Man, I am rocking that quarantine haircut. G'day and welcome to shoemaking lesson number seven. In today's lesson, we will be skiving our vamps, uh, punching shoelace holes in our rear quarters, doing a bit of basic edge finishing to make it look better, and assembling our uppers like so. Let's get started. So we'll start with skiving our vamps. So here where we've got these little lines that we drew um, through our pattern pieces, I'm going to join them up to create the line that we're going to cut, well, skive to. Now we're not gonna go all the way to here. I'm gonna stop perpendicular to that point. So it'll be about here. So that's the area that we're going to skype. Let's do the other one as well. All right, so I've got here a 45 degree skiving knife that I made myself out of a bit of high speed steel. And all we're gonna do is cut in like so. Or with the heel of the knife, just depends on um, what works best in that scenario and what you're more comfortable with. So we're not gonna use a um, board like this that we can cut on, we're gonna use a, a hard surface that you can't cut into like a piece of glass. I mentioned to my mum that I needed a piece of glass for skiving and this is what she gave me one day. So we're gonna use this chili themed chopping board. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to cut in mostly with the heel end of this knife. And you can see I've already started this one. Um, I'm going to go down. So we want this part to just disappear away into nothing. So you want it to be, well, yeah, nothing basically. So less than half a mil thick, because when we put our rear quarter on, on the inside, on the outside of the shoe, you'll have this clear um, edge where it'll sit, but on the inside, you don't want that because that is gonna hit against your foot and cause annoyance. So what you wanna do is make that edge disappear so that there's no uh, ridge there to rub against your foot. So we're gonna do, cut that away to nothing. So on this edge, we're going for zero thickness and on the other edge, we're going to stop just there. So this is gonna be a tapered skive. Now, if you've got a bell skiver like I do just over there, you can use that, um, but for the purpose of this, uh, a knife is just as good. So, just gonna do small movements. Because we're going around a curve, we have to keep readjusting. Now this isn't gonna be perfect, but that's okay. You can see I took a chunk out of there, so that's no good, but for the purpose of this, it doesn't really matter. All right, so that's, that's a start. So back here, I've gone a bit too thick. You can see how the leather changes as you go down the layers. So leather itself doesn't have layers in it, but the fibers change as you go down. So you can see a distinct difference between right at the very top here, and as you get down more into the fibrous layer, they have proper names, I just don't know what they are. So what we should see is a consistent gradient a bit more like here. So without even looking at the edge, I can tell you that I need to cut more off here. So to do that, I'm going to cut this way.
right. So I reckon I've done a pretty good job of that. You can see I've got a fairly consistent gradient as I go along. Um, I've gone down to, oh, let's say half a mil or so. Now at this point, I haven't cut it square and you don't really want to. So this piece is going to match up here and the way I've done it there will provide a smooth transition between where I've skived it and the full thickness here. If you cut in and do like an actual step there, then it will look funny on the outside. But as it is, that should work well. So when we look on this side, that, that step there is small enough that I'm not gonna be able to detect it with my foot. Now this, this is an issue. That was definitely a mistake. What you should do to avoid that, if you keep an eye on this part and make sure that's going perfectly in line with that line we drew, and you keep the heel of this quite close to the edge of your leather, but not cutting in, then you shouldn't be able to cut in like this unless the leather pulls up off the surface, which is possible. If you have your knife out here, then there's a little bit of a gap between the blade and the uh, glass at the edge here. And so that will leave a bit of a step there. The further you move it in, the closer that will get to zero. So it's a case of practice makes perfect. But I'm pretty happy with that, despite my silly mistake. So I'll just do the other side now. Now this side's a bit harder because I'm right-handed and so I can't attack from this angle like we did on the other side. So I'm doing it slightly differently and this way will take a bit more skill. So I'm going to err on the side of caution and rather than taking a lot off each time, I'm just gonna take as little as possible until I've broken through. Another way to do it is to pull. And then you're basically using it like you did back here with your heel against the glass. Except this time you've got the toe against the glass. It got to a bit too gung-ho there. And I wasn't careful enough about keeping that toe in the right spot. And I let this ride up. So that's a mistake, but it's not, not a real problem. fairly happy with that. I took a bit too much off on here, but otherwise it's a fairly neat tapered skive. Now it looks like I've gone in further here than on this side, and that would just be a marking issue. So this was marked further in than that side, uh, probably mostly to do with the inaccuracy of these wax pencils. So I'm just gonna take a bit more off there to make it match up with this side. Also, if you're wondering why there's some white showing through, that's just where the dye didn't fully penetrate this leather. All right, so there is our skived uppers. 
So I'll do the other one and then we will move on. You may remember that when we were drawing the pattern for the back strap, we added a bit to the top here so that we could fold it over and have a little pull tab on the back of our shoe. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a line 40 mil down. That marks where we're gonna to fold to. And I'm going to draw a 15 millimeters down. And I'm going to skive from there down to nothing. That way we don't end up with a lump at the back of our shoe. And take a bit more off. There we go. So now that should work nicely. Now we're going to punch holes in our rear quarters for our laces to go through. And on these, I'm going to put eyelets in. I would definitely re recommend using eyelets because otherwise the holes can stretch quite easily and it looks a bit haggard. And long term, um, so years down the track, it may prove to be a bit of a problem. So eyelets, they add a bit of a, a visual point, but they're much, much stronger and tougher. So I definitely recommend that. So let's get started. So I'm using four mil eyelets. So I have sized the punch to suit. It's about four mil. If you've never come across one of these, they are called an eyelet press. They are available for, I don't know, 40, $50 on eBay. They're pretty rough, but they do the job really well and you can get these dies for them. So these ones are for eight mil rivets, which is what I use on just about everything. Uh, you can get them for uh, press studs, eyelets, just about everything. So this is a very standard machine. And for the amount of money you pay, it's incredibly worthwhile. So we'll place our eyelets through the front face. And on the back, we put these teeny, tiny little washers. Now, if you don't use the washers, the eyelets will probably just pull straight through and you don't want that. So we'll use them. They've got to sit on there perfectly. There you go. quarter. So I'll do that with the rest of them now. Now that those eyelets are in place, I'm going to take a number one beveler and just go around everywhere that's visible, front and back. So this bottom edge, which is going to get lasted, I'm not going to worry about that. And this back edge of the rear quarter, it's going to get covered by the back strap. So we won't worry about touching that either. But everything else will get chamfered.
now that our edges are chamfered, we're going to give it a coat of black tokenol and burnish it with a burnisher. So I like to use a foam paintbrush for applying tokenol. Let's get a tiny bit on the tip and just give it a good coat without spilling over onto the face. So the reason I'm using black instead of clear is because this leather hasn't been dyed through completely and so you've got this strange white layer. So by using the black, it hides that quite nicely. So once that's done, I'll make sure they have spilled a little bit on the face there. I'll wipe that off with the back of the brush, or you can use your hand. Um, I believe it's water-based and so it will quite easily come off if you spill it on your fingers. That was way too much I just put on there. Now you don't have to use tokenol, but it, it's pretty much the best burnishing agent there is. And it works on chrome or veg tan leathers. So when that is no longer wet, we will use our uh, slicker. They're also called burnisher or slicker and just give it a bit of a rub and you should be able to see and feel the difference. So that's what we started with, which is quite rough and it's, um, yeah, got that clear white section. This is fairly smooth and it's dark and it blends in nicely with the rest. You don't want your edges to stand out for the wrong reasons. So we'll do that to every piece and then we can look at assembling. And we're done for the day. So in today's lesson, we skived our uppers, we have punched holes and pressed in eyelets for our laces, and we've chamfered, dyed, and burnished our edges. In the next lesson, we will start stitching it all together. So we're done.